This is not, uh, this is really not a prepared talk. Um, uh, basically, I did a PyCon presentation uh, about 10 days ago, and it involved some JavaScript. So I'm going to talk a lot about the, the Python thing, because Python's cool, and JavaScript is whatever. So, so <laughs> then let me just, so if you haven't seen, and the, re the real reason for this is, um, the, there's a thing that the Python people like to do for data science, is these Jupyter notebooks. So basically, this allows you, and you can use this for other backends. You can have a Julia backend. You can have, I believe, you can have a JavaScript backend. You can actually execute each of these cells in order, and basically, you can actually do data science. So this is a notebook which I did for one of these things. You take a photo. You take a style. You can execute all this code. This is a deep learning presentation. You can get to style transfer on this thing. So this is kind of what the Jupyter Notebook is all about. It's about Python and showing Python working. But what I really wanted to do is, sorry, what's that? What I wanted to do is some reinforcement learning. And the thing about reinforcement learning is people, the, the deep mind go thing was like top of, it's a top thing. If we can, if I could show people this, people learning Go in here, in the browser, during the workshop, that would be cool. But that's probably not going to happen. So, ah, so here we are. Basically, instead of doing Go, there's a nice thing on the App Store called Bubble Breaker, which is like a candy crush. Um, and ba if you haven't ever played it, it's quite kind of addictive. Basically, if you click uh, like contiguous blocks of color, this stuff falls down. And if you can, if you click enough columns, it starts shifting over. And this game continues forever. There's no special features, but it is a kind of a strategic game in that you have to plan what balls are falling into what place, so you can annihilate them at the right time. If you just go for the highest score you can on one screen you'll never get more columns to, to kill. So this is a kind of a strategic game. Um, and what I have here, this bubble breaker, the, the, pro the is one issue is, sorry, if I do this, this is not, this is a, a numpy array in Python. This is not very um, user friendly. So what I wanted to do is go from that to um, something where people actually visualize this. And one of the nice things that the Jupyter system has this HTML command, which will execute HTML in a cell. So having done that, we can then use JavaScript to produce a nice table of stuff, which is the output, which is now going to be filled by... This is the output of a, a py Python backend which has filled it with random data. If I just go across to here. So in the Python backend, I have some JavaScript which I can pop out, which uses now the IPython notebook JavaScript kernel to actually create the board and fill it. And this is a table of cells. So it can use this, but also it can populate this with on-click events. So when you have an on-click event here, um, and you click on a cell, it can then go away and execute on the back end some Python commands. So the Python commands can then, t can then instruct it via this callback. Da -da -da. This is the JavaScript produced by the Python. It can just go back to this function, this handle Python output, which will then redisplay the board. So the neat thing about this is I've got back end, so I've got the the fancy display from JavaScript, clickable via the clickable, which calls the Python backend, all within a Jupyter notebook. So the net result is you can then play this in the browser. <laughs> um, so I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm not very good at playing this while being watched, <laughs> but I have played this a great deal. So. So here we are, we're about to destroy a column. What happens is another column comes in. And you can waste an awful lot of time playing this game. Um, 
So, so, the, so the, that kind of that's the JavaScript bit. That's kind of that's nice. Um, I, if you're interested, I can show you some learning, maybe. Um, so this is now. Now we're moving on to. Uh, so the learning I'm going to do on a small board, because smaller is easier. And so okay. So this is so this is now the Python backend is doing some deep learning, I believe. Oh no, not Let's train this thing. Here we go. So now it's doing epochs worth of training. Um, it does a hundred, it plays its, play, basically this thing is playing against itself. So it plays a hundred games. Well, not playing against it, it's a solitaire type game. It's playing a hundred games and it can do a hundred in, in ten seconds. Um, basically it does what's called queue learning. So there's very strong parallels with what the deep mind people are doing. Obviously, they had more compute power than this and more time than this. And then also, they had lots of other fancy tricks as well. They had they had a lot of yeah yeah yeah. yeah. No, no, they, they, they did lots of awesome stuff. There's, there's no yeah. question. It's what you can't do brute force. Ah, well, okay, but this is a slightly sorry to that point. This is a slightly different game, and you've actually got, for Go, it's a completely knowable situation, in that the guy's playing hopefully optimally against you, or, or less, but you still have complete information. With this thing, you don't know what's coming at you from the side, so you're, you're playing against statistics. So, if we can... It's the same when you learn to play Pong nowadays, right? Right. Sorry, we're at 700, and this, is, this runs for 1,000. Anyway, so I apologize for my lack of fancy slides, but this is a small, this is a way of leveraging this. It took a while to get the ping pong back between the JavaScript side and the back end, partly because the back end is hidden from you while you're using it. Because any time you try and print out a Python debug message, it destroys the fact that you've done, you're producing your the function is wanting you to produce JavaScript out of it. So there's some some funkiness there. So here we've got final thing. Basically, this thing has learnt. If we go back, if we go back up, this started here. It on average gets four new columns and a score of 214. <coughs> what it learns to do is it gets 10 columns and a score of 370. So it's actually, it has actually learned to do something. Um, and if we just use our little board, and then play on our little board, it actually has learned to... So, so that there it's just played a game, we can play other games. Um, I've got a, I've got a pre-trained one on... Ah, that was useful. Sorry, you can also be very unlucky because you might be given essentially a checkerboard pattern and you'll never get out of it. Um, anyway, there we go. Thank you for sharing that. So uh, in the future sessions, you're very welcome to just suddenly pop up and say, hey,